Hello and welcome to Camberwell College of Arts, University of the Arts, London. We would like to be coming to you from our beloved studio at college. However, as a consequence of COVID-19, today we are instead coming to you from our living rooms, our kitchens, even our bedrooms. The group that is virtually convened for this session is composed of finishers. These are third year students on drawing at Camberwell. And at this college, we have a very special relationship to the traditional disciplines of fine art. And we're going to think about this today specifically in relation to drawing as a point of departure and of return for contemporary critical practice. So thinking about drawing as an expanded field. Before I say how our session will unfold, let me introduce myself. I'm Marsha Bradfield and I lead third year drawing here at Camberwell. I'll be co-chairing with Rupert Norfolk, who is the course director of drawing. Rupert, is there anything you would like to say before we crack on? I'm really intrigued to see what our students have to say here, our graduating students, because uh, as you mentioned at Camberwell, the, um, the fine art courses are uh, discipline specific, but on the drawing course, although it's rooted in what we might think of as an activity of drawing, a kind of root platform of drawing, students are free to follow their work wherever it takes them, to follow their interests. And so I'm, I'm very intrigued to find how these students reflect back on, on, on the, the function of drawing in their practice and also how that might have changed um, or, or taken on a new role um, following the lockdown restrictions. Thank you, Rupert. So we will run our session as follows. There will be a series of very short position statements, about a minute long. We have invited our interlocutors to respond to a series of three questions. These questions are as follows. First of all, how would you characterize your practice in general? What role does drawing play in your practice? How has drawing helped you to adapt your practice under lockdown? Our interlocutors will respond to these in position statements that we will proceed with one after the other. I will keep time. Rupert will be listening intently. Further to this, he will draw out key themes, questions, comments, and concerns, and these will prime our discussion. First though, let's take a look at what we're missing. This is our studio at Camberwell College. We're looking forward to being back into it very soon. Without further ado, let's turn to our interlocutors. First up, Adam Barrett. Adam. So for this, I've chosen a painting by Duncan Grant. Uh, Duncan Grant was part of the Bloomsbury Group, which is where I draw one of my major inspirations from. And I love their use of line, color, their decorational format and how they display the human form in such a unique way. Uh, for me, drawing as a practice has really helped me think through the way I can position my work, the way I position the audience within my work and the way I think about my work in relation to space and materiality. So I like to play around with image and object hoods in my work. So I'll have a flat image and uh, create and design furniture using traditional craft techniques and um, decorational painting. So I'm thinking through drawing and using drawing as a preparatory method in my work to present uh, and create another platform. Thank you so much, Adam. That is great. Our next contributor is Ashley Goldman. Ashley. Although I start my drawing with a traditional, in the sort of traditional sense of the word on paper, this is most certainly pushed further into another realm, either in the dark room, three dimensionally, or as in my most recent project in the field of community based art practice. Um, I constantly seek to use drawing to create an experience for the viewer, 
Um, the picture that you can see in the background um, of Gago's reticularis um, has inspired me from sort of year one, I would say, when I first discovered her. Um, I like the idea of creating an experience that provokes the viewer to question what they see, physically respond in some way or become participant in the artwork. Um, during the COVID pandemic, my drawing practice has become much more personal and intimate in some ways, in the sense that I've actually been drawing <laughs> um, in the traditional sense um, much more often. But on the other hand, lockdown has stretched my imagination, pushing me to sort of imagine lines in a more metaphorical way, um, such as the lines drawn by sowing of the seeds by the residents in the road in my latest project um, and the lines of communications that we all have to now draw upon um, to reach sort of further networks you know in the way of creating and um, continuing on with our practice. Thank you so much Ashley. Next up we have Christian. Um, the piece uh, on the screen is a piece of work that I uh, created for my final project uh, in university, so it's a poem uh, from a collection of poems that I wrote um, as a final work to do with my identity. And my work is really based in my identity and sort of thinking about ideas relating to queer identity and explorations of narratives of queerness in different formats to open up discussions about diversity and identity. Additionally, I use my practice as a form of diary to reflect on my own past experiences and rearticulate them into pieces of work. Drawing has a core within my practice um, as I use it often to frame my poetry based work and to plan ideas and symbols and motifs that I want to make into larger installation based work. During lockdown, um, I've found that drawing has been really integral to my practice in that I've used it a lot more um, as a finished work as opposed to using it as just a preparatory tool for my more like large installation based work. Thank you, Christian. Next up, we have Jen Wright. Um, my practice revolves around self portraiture, although I've recently expanded into painting others. And rather than capturing a direct likeness of my sitters, I instead work to express a psychological moment of self awareness. Uh, drawing plays a key role in my practice as I always without fail first sketch out my intended sitter, whether that's me or somewhere else before transferring my sketch onto canvas or MDF. This usually helps me to understand the composition of the piece, piece rather than stick to a strict guideline of likeness or just keep it too rigid and traditional. Uh, because I had to complete the degree during lockdown, I had to speed up my practice a lot. So I found that using an iPad helped me to like speed up my process and method of working. I could test compositions and colour palettes more rapidly and draw out a series of sketches in quick succession. Whereas before using traditional methods, I'd find myself overthinking a bit. And I'm quite an impatient painter, so I found that I work best when I'm in the moment as opposed to labouring over minute decisions. So drawing allows me to focus my mind and get in the zone a lot faster than if I were to immediately just start painting. Thank you, Jan. Richard. Hi, my name is Richard Blasco and I'm currently joining you from Slovakia. So I would characterize my practice as a multidisciplinary artist, but I'm mainly focused on painting. Um, when you consider painting as a medium, there's always something before it, some kind of uh, preparational sketch or some kind of drawing. So I think it's very, very vital to realize that drawing is the beginning of anything we really want to do as artists. And uh, it's the beginning of, of uh, making a sculpture, making an installation or even painting. So finally, during the lockdown, I had the time to get back to painting and use it as a sort of meditation and as a new beginning and focus on it as a, as a soul medium. Uh, it has helped me to, to be mindful during the lockdown and it has helped me to realize that um, how much cherished drawing can be and what a powerful medium it can be. Thank you. Sam Hopper. So hi, I'm Sam. Uh, I'm in London at the moment. Um, and basically in my practice, I'm interested in gender bending and expressing various forms of identity through the use of a narrative. 
uh, inspired by drawing, but communicating through photography mostly. Uh, I'm reflecting upon feminine things that I've been held back from experiencing by creating characters and adopting their identities in forms of self-portraiture. Uh, drawing has been the fundamental thing to start any kind of thought process or start any kind of work uh, for me, really. Um, the third year practice has been driven largely by creating characters through drawing and imagining their life and persona through sketching them. And I think for me, drawing is a springboard into developing ideas. It's uh, the most reliable way to bring ideas to life and to find other ways to explore them. Under lockdown, my practice became more uh, photography based, but that was inspired by drawings from previous work. Uh, drawing has also helped me in dealing with issues I had in my childhood, growing up gay, uh, visualizing and drawing slurs like in the picture here, um, and making that part of my practice really helped me own it. Um, I see it as a method of therapy in a way, and it, I think drawing helps you understand yourself a little bit more. Thank you so much, Sam. Next up, Demi Styles. I'll just briefly introduce my practice. I make installations including large scale paintings on unstretched canvas with sculptures which mimic the style of the paintings. My work has feminist themes and explores gender, identity, domesticity and personal narratives. Drawing influences the style of my work. Drawing pattern freehand allows for mistakes or shakes in the lines. Once the lines are drawn, I reinforce these mistakes with paint, creating something flawed and imperfect within the design. Drawing during quarantine, I've spent longer with my work. Without travelling to a studio, I found I'd wake up and begin working faster because there was no distance between myself and the studio. This has made it possible to produce more detailed designs and more detailed outcomes than anything I've done before. Thank you, Demi. And last but not least, Rebecca Hancock. Hi, um, in my practice, I play to understand the details of the domestic and everyday um, object structure and routine through a material exploration. Um, I have created my own isolated space within lockdown um, so within the domestic, which analyzes the frustrations and repetition of our routine and relationship with these domestic objects. Um, drawing for me has always been a combination of language and understanding my thought process. It has been a preliminary drawing, but I see this equal to my exploration of other materials um, by having a one proposition and perhaps 10 different variations, which will then work together as a collection of work. That is a really good representation, I think, of some of the ways that drawing is being mobilized within the context of our studio, BA third year drawing at Camberwell. I'd now like to ask Rupert if you have any thoughts on certain things that you've been hearing that resonate with you? Yes, well, I certainly do. I mean, I, I found that absolutely fascinating, I have to say, because there are so many different kind of notions of what drawing might be kind of buried or not even buried or just laid bare within within those accounts, I think. Um, and so as, as, as a drawing course leader, it's really interesting to understand how um, the different ways that drawing can be utilized uh, and exploited. I mean, I've, I've made some notes here and it's, we can see for a start, there's notions of drawing um, as a process, as involved with preparation and testing. Ideas of making, you know, the idea that you can make mistakes and the mistakes become part of the work through the process. The idea of Becky just talking about propositions and variations. So I think this, this idea of, of drawing as a process um, to generate, this generative, seems to be emerging there. Um, but there's also the notion of drawing as a finished work. So there's this kind of dual idea that drawing is a process that's generative and it's also a medium in its own right and a way of presenting ideas. And then there was some really interesting, I noticed that, that there were comments about drawing being used as a pragmatic uh, use of drawing as a framing device, but also as a kind of supporting structure. Demi was talking about the kind of bare bones, this idea of kind of, an internal armature for an artwork. So I thought the idea that drawing might frame 
a poem in the case to Christian or, or um, be the armature for a painting in the case of Demi was very interesting. Um, there was the notion of drawing as metaphor, which I think is something we, we could maybe um, look into. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of that in terms of um, maybe presenting or representing one thing in terms of another. Um, and then there were ideas of psych psychology of drawing or therapy. And I think that's really very interesting. I'm, I'm curious if we could we could dig into that a little bit more. How in what way drawing kind of taps into psychology or might elicit psychological reactions. Um, yeah, I mean, th those were the kind of key points and that's that covers quite a gambit. And I, I yeah, I, I think there's plenty there to talk about. Um, this idea of drawing as maybe having a psychological um, quality or drawing as therapy. I don't know if that's something that you all feel or if that's just the, the, the couple of artists who mentioned it here. Um, does anybody want to volunteer anything about that or expand on it if you mentioned it? Or is there anyone who thinks that, that the drawing actually does add a psychological quality to their work in a way that they hadn't thought of or mentioned previously? It's just the, the act of sketching something out or visualising thoughts. It's just a, a different way to, to like untangle your brain, I think. It, it, it sounds weird, but it's just, it's, it's putting it out there. It's like visualising it. It's seeing like what you're actually thinking. And then that like, it's, it's a process of like understanding yourself a bit more, I think. Because you, you, you see, you're seeing you know, your thoughts and then it develops into other things. And yeah, it, beca it becomes more than just like what's going on in your head. It like ties to other things like in the world, really. Yeah. Mm. Do, do you think that's to do with it, with drawing being kind of durational, that the fact that it, as it takes time, as you are drawing, your thoughts develop and the two develop in conjunction? Is it something to do with that? Yeah, I think you're totally right. I think, I think it's um, as, you're, as you're drawing things, I think you're thinking constantly. Um, well, for me, that, that's the case anyway. So I, I totally agree with that. Because there, somebody else mentioned that, that, I mean, there were lots of people talking about it as a thought process or a way of thinking. And then there was a suggestion that it, drawing helps focus the mind. And I thought that was very interesting, this idea of focus, because it implies some, a state that is maybe more meditative or contemplative. I can say a bit about um, drawing as in terms of meditation and how it has helped me to maybe even clear my thoughts and to be more organized when it comes to form. Because I think there is a, there's an interesting relationship between an abstract, which is a thought, which has um, no roots in the real world, in the world, in the metaphysical one. And when you put your pencil to the paper and you actually start to do something, then you kind of metaphysically manifest the thought and it's, and it's unraveling right in front of you, which for me is really interesting. There's this pure sense of creation, the most profound one that we see in caves is just mark making, which really drawing is. And I think this is the, one of the most satisfactory feelings is when you do something as in terms of like a mark making and it fulfills you and it clears your head and it manifests in, in the real and the metaphysical one. The, so what I found really enjoyable is the transition from the abstract world of thought into the metaphysical realm. This seems like a really good place to bring in Demi because I guess one of the things I was thinking about Richard as you were speaking with reference to cave paintings is you were speaking about these as hosting mark making but actually they also host narratives that are crystallized in images and this is something that I know is integral to your work Demi do you want to offer some thoughts on that? I was just thinking when you're talking that um being in control of creating a narrative like I am when I make my work is meditative in this almost self-serving way in that you have so much control about the story that you're that you're presenting and I feel it can be meditative in that you can you can look at a scenario that is happening in your own life or an experience that you have or something that's real and you have less control over and you can turn it into this thing which is completely yours and you can resolve things in that 
I think, with that control um, and present that as maybe um, a better alternative or whatever it is that you want to communicate. Speaking about control, I mean, I guess something that we didn't hear much about, although I know that it's integral to our studio, is the relationship between writing and drawing. So thinking about moving from mark making language through symbols into a kind of abstraction um, and, and then moving back. And I just wondered if this was something that, um, for instance, Christian, your work is of course very much related to writing in the form of poetry, but do you have any thoughts about the sort of mark making in the form of writing in contrast to the form of drawing? Or for you, is there no distinction? With drawing as well, I think like with my work personally, I find it as like a the sort of second part of the process. Like with my poetry, I tend to write the poetry first and then work the drawings around it. Um, but I do definitely think they kind of have a flow to them in that I like have to think of the like how the drawing is going to interact with the poetry itself. Um, but they do sort of have a flow in between the two. Like I don't think that they can have sort of, I can't like really have with like my work when I make them into sort of zine or magazine type works where I want a collection of poetry. I definitely think I can't really have one without the other. Um, on the note of like control as well and how they that kind of links back into it as well I do think that like drawing in the sort of preparatory sense gives you a sense of control over like future work because you are like with that sort of meditative process and thinking about what you're doing as you're drawing and how like things are going to look and how you're going to place things I don't know if this sort of echoes in Becky's work as well with how the way you do your larger drawings or like you plan out your um like installation domestic type work yeah I feel like in the same sense me and Chris work quite similarly but it's more prominent in in Chris's final outcome but um I think because I've always written a diary I've since uni I've now been um using written language kind of with the relationship of drawing um, so instead of trying to um, write down my ideas I've been trying to like visualize my brain thoughts with through drawing um, and that is why I do one proposition with loads of different variations through different material through different materials um, starting from drawing um, yeah so it helps me understand quite similarly to Chris and Demi I guess Hmm. So there's an idea here of, of the kind of abstract thought meeting the materiality of the of the process in a way a bit like Richard was describing earlier. Um, that's that's very interesting. And I'm thinking about Christian talking about poetry. Um, Ashley, you mentioned metaphor, drawing as a metaphor, and that seems to have a well ha clearly has a relationship to po poetry. Um, could Ashley, could you expand a little bit on how you think about drawing in that way? Yeah, I think that, you know, expanding drawing into sort of like, almost like the three dimensional realm in, in another way, just creates a whole different experience of how we sort of acknowledge drawing to be. Um, you know, putting sort of physically creating drawing with the help of others into the expanded field is just um it's a completely non-traditional way and to experience it and create can create sort of many different um experiences for the viewer it can sort of introduce memory recollection of, of things in the past can i ask you because your practice in many respects is maybe I'll hazard this, the most socially engaged. Yeah. And something I'm really interested in is what the edges are, because I think often drawings have edges. 
And do you sort of have a sense of edges? I guess one of the things that I'm thinking about is your frames. So for those of you unfamiliar with this aspect, Ashley created some frames that could be planted. You could say a little bit more about that, but these yeah. frames have got very clear edges. Are, is that aspect of your socially engaged practice a drawing? And if so, how? And if so, yeah. how is it not? Okay, um, I suppose the thing is, I'm as a, an artist, I'm also um, very mathematical. And I look at nature in the sense of mathematics as well. A lot of, in the past, a lot of artists have also combined their math mathematical theories within their art practice. Um, and I suppose that it's the same as the building blocks within nature. A lot of my art, I think, is quite organic. Um, and it sort of also reflects that. Um, and although there is a frame, I want to sort of incorporate frames in a lot of my work, there is also an expansion beyond that frame. Um, like with the planting of the frames, with the seed attached to them, you're then sort of pushing that out into an expanse, which is sort of unknown. Um, yeah, so I think that's how I look upon it. Um, I'm always looking at that sort of contradiction really about something being contained and not being contained. That was very nicely put. Um, and it, I, I'm interested as well because you and I think a couple of others mentioned in the earlier talks, you mentioned um, in relation to tradition then when you talked about expanding drawing, you talked against tradition. And I think this is maybe an interesting, I'm curious to what the rest of you think in terms of this, whether drawing is thought of as a kind of traditional discipline and that you all feel you're kicking away from it or whether um, whether that tradition is something to be reworked? Yeah, I, I don't think we're the sort of, it's, it's a new thing that people are pushing away from what is the traditional realms of drawing. Um, I think this has been going on for quite a few decades. Um, I think people just do it in a completely different way. And I think the introduction of technology has also changed mm. how people regard drawing. So when, when we think of drawing tra traditionally, are we thinking of it more in terms of a craft perhaps? Yeah, I, th I, I, suppose, I suppose in some ways we are, you know, people draw from a very early age. It's something that's quite natural, isn't it? To put a pencil to paper, or, or some something to, to something else, to a ground, to actually create an image. And that's sort of quite a natural thing to do. Um, so I don't know if you'd call it a craft or just something that is a natural instinct to all of us. But it is that whole thing of mark making on ground is something which is regarded as very traditional. Mm. So that's so the idea that drawing is something instinct and instinctive and natural makes me now want to maybe bring the conversation to to Jen and to Adam, who both have quite a stylized way of drawing. I'm interested in maybe we could think about style and form in relation to this kind of natural instinct. So um, I took I took a lot of inspiration from the like the war pop propaganda posters. And rather than seeing drawing, I think for me growing up traditionally, you either have drawing as preparatory for a painting or drawing as a photorealistic interpretation of an image or a moving image and real life. So for me, I looked at tonality and the way that I could take that tonality from drawing and their techniques from shading and interpret that in a much more simple, um, simplified way in flattening the image. So using three colours, I do uh, light tone, dark tone and mid tone. And then obviously in, with that, I add uh, lots of background colours and uh, make lots of geometric designs. But with that, having stylized, I don't know, because we were talking, we've been talking about this quite a lot recently, with the stylization of it, you don't want you don't want it to come across as like a one trick pony, but at the same time, you have to really have evidence of why you're choosing to do this stylization within drawing. And I think drawing allows you to have creative thought process 
uh, around your stylization. So your stylization is just the image, whereas drawing itself is the explanation and how you can come out with various outcomes. Very interesting. Jen, how, how do you feel about style then? Because you, you have a very different style from Adam, but it's nevertheless very distinctive in yours. Yeah, I feel like I agree with like a lot of the things Adam was saying. We've got a very similar method of working, I think. We focus heavily on the drawing aspect and then what you were saying about the three tones. I feel like we both stick to that quite rigidly now. Like we've got our, we know what we like in our drawings and how we're going to turn them into paintings. I think I am quite traditional in the sense that, well, because I feel like a lot of traditionally painters would say you paint with, you draw with the paint, whereas I'm more, I'll draw out the drawing and then I'll fill it in with big blocks of paint and it's more of an actual, it's more about the colour and the actual forms that I'm making. So it's more drawing than, if that makes any sense in my... <laughs> but, but it's interesting because you both talk about um, using three tones, there's a kind of calculated, it's, it's, you're talking about a schematic um, yeah. logic applied to your work. But at the same time, both of you, it seems to me your work um, reflects a, a unique or an individual sensibility, which is perhaps not quite so calculated. And I don't know, do you, how do you feel about that? Do you think there's a, the way that you paint is quite instinctive as well? Is it a mixture of instinct and calculation or? I think so. I think I do go with the flow of the drawing. I want it to be full of energy. I, can, I like it to be very two dimensional and like a snapshot. I want it to be a bit fun to look at, but at the same, like I want to get the basics of the person down the likeness, but I don't want that to be the entire drawing. I want the paint and the actual mark making to speak for itself. I think for me, because I, I play a lot on classical tradition, so I, a lot of my, mine is a narrative completely based around Greek mythology or Roman mythology. So for me, rather than having that as like a boring oil painting, I'd rather implicate the viewer in that, playing around direct eye contact and then flirting with these subverted classics of homoeroticism, sadomasochism and power dynamics. And I think when you're playing around with themes like what Jen was saying, that have audience participation in them or um, other aspects, then it, it, brings, it brings the audience into it as well as implicates them within your setting that you've created, like this sort of narrative. And when you have when you have a stylization, it does it does just enforce that even more as some sort of uniform um, presentation. And especially if you have multiple versions and multiple layers of that, then it just enforces it even more. And I think it's a, it gives the audience a better understanding of what you're really trying to say. But it's interesting that on the one, Jen's, Jen talked about going with the flow and obviously there's a kind of gestural aspect to her work, which is kind of very distinctive. Would you say you go with the flow? Because I sometimes wonder if your work is, some, is more kind of designed almost or kind of planned out in a kind of geometric way. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm, I'm not a go with the flow person. I feel like <laughs> I'm definitely... Uh, I mean, because I additionally illustrate my paintings before I do them, so I have time to edit. And I think, uh, for me, that works. It doesn't work for everybody else, but I think uh, I really enjoy, like, designing, and I really enjoy having, like, everything really meticulously planned out and thought through, which, I mean, sometimes when talking about something in the context of ancient Greek mythology, whereas not a lot of people understand it, uh, can be a bit pointless but I think with when all arranging like models and uh, positioning them in ways that are, are more that are designed to implicate things to the viewer uh, that's more what I take time and joy out of. No, that, that comes across I think. So there's some really different approaches to using drawing kind of emerge, well becoming uh, explicit through this conversation I think it's very interesting uh, and I wondered if we talked a lot about kind of drawing an imagery, but thinking about some of the images you guys showed, I wondered if we could talk a bit about the idea of drawing as an object. I'm thinking, I guess, of Becky's um, image of these kind of draw a drawing in space and Ashley's image of a drawing in space. Um, 
and Sam's drawings on the bottles, for example, I mean, there, there are other examples. Can drawing be an object as well as an image? Well, you're thinking about that also. I'm thinking about, of course, Demi's urns. So right. the idea of the drawing sort of expanding off the wall and into the Euclidean space beyond. Yeah, so I mean, do, do we, each of you want to say something about the, the, the drawing as an object or the materiality of drawing in your practice beyond the kind of shaping or structuring? Okay, um, so I would say that objects have a significant um, factor in my work, um, but also definitely through lockdown, site-specific was um, more important in how I intend the viewer to view the work. So I mirrored the palette of the white walls and wooden floors to distort the space as an extension of the room. So I was mainly, um, so the idea of this was to force the viewer out of the traditional gallery space and to yeah, invite them to consider the room itself as a part of the work. Um, um, yeah, so as curating as a part of my practice, um, I make these installations that are carefully composed like like on a piece of paper and that's kind of how I try and picture it because um, it's also like what my drawings are like, I'm drawing a space. Um, so I feel like the process um, in building my objects, which are paper mache and wooden and wood, um, the kind of process of making them relate to my drawing um, through quite a like repetitive process, which um, is all part of my process. Um, so I feel like drawing is kind of links to everything I do in the sense that I'm like drawing with my hands physically to create this object. Um, so I make uh, my sculptures, which I feel are like an extension of my paintings. Um, and I feel they're quite odd as objects because they're ceramics and I use acrylic to paint over them and they still have that very flat um, stylization that I put into my painting. Um, and I think they function in an installation to sort of, um, control how a viewer um, interacts with, with the work as a whole. But um, I also think that um, my, the way that I present my canvas and the way that I paint onto my canvas, my mark making, it, it uses objecthood more than maybe if I were to work on flat paper or if I were to work on stretched canvas. For me personally, it's how I understand it anyway, is um, I look at like the canvas as an object in itself, which you can sort of build into in this labored way of marks and marks and adding to this to this fabric and so yeah I look at I look at even my paintings which are flat as having gravity and having um objected yeah I would actually because I, I feel when you when you push drawing into sort of the the realm of space um it and your drawing becomes embodied within that space. Um, it creates this sort of dynamic that in which drawing can be experienced. Um, it can sort of be absorbed, touched. Um, and it's when it's no longer bound to the surface, I think it allows the viewer to encounter the drawing in a completely different way. Um, I would say it's sort of, encourages the drawer to become uh, the viewer to become a participant in the work um which isn't the case when drawing is on on paper um it just creates a whole different dimension um that of participation which you wouldn't get um unless it had been embodied in that way hey so really engaging the viewer in a different yeah, way absolutely yeah and Sam, you're, you're, you've been drawing on objects that almost form, take the function of props for your photographs. Yeah, that's right. I think, I think objects have an importance as uh, props for me, but they also um, 
it's also kind of like a canvas. It's there's kind of a duality with my relationship with objects because you know in, in the picture that I showed when I was talking, it's it, it's a canvas to and it changes the context of the actual drawing itself. I think if you use like an object like that, I use bottles and things because I think it it conveyed a bit of a narrative with like with there was wine and beer bottles that I used and they're kind of very distinctive in their gender roles and you know like they're very gendered drinks I think you know beer and wine um so I think that if you use objects I think it can change the context of the drawing I think it can help convey a bit more of a narrative um so it's a tool and it's you know it's it's a um yeah I, th I, I think it's a I, I think they I think they're fun to use I like using um found objects a lot of the time you know nothing like new really I like using found objects because it it has a bit more of a weight a bit more of a history to me like for, for my work very interesting so the the choice of objects kind of adds a layer of symbolism or code, codification beyond mm. beyond the drawing yeah very interesting um well I I wanted to finish with a kind of final question for everybody because uh it came up again I think several times through in your initial presentations were words like routine and practice practice is obviously a word that we all we all use as artists so i wondered if you could each just briefly say a couple of words about the role of drawing in your kind of routine or or, or practice as an artist perhaps um uh yeah does it help you sustain your practice in a way um or is it merely a, a mode of um producing artwork um, so I think for me, routine and my work really helps me establish uh, a timeline for myself in producing the work, but also in the way I think about it and the way it evolves in my mind and how the different elements all come together with the flat image, the, the handmade furniture, the craft skills, the homoerotism and the subverted classics. Uh, having this procedure just really helps me think about my work in a different way. I, I would say that the routine of drawing um, really helps me consolidate my ideas. It helps me, you know, get the ideas out of my head and into the physical realm. Be it then that I will then swap between two-dimensional to three-dimensional back to two-dimensional again. It, it just helps me work they, those ideas out before I proceed further with them. So for my practice, I find it really useful because well, I use it as sort of a base to work things out. Um, obviously, because I'm then also making finished works that are based around drawing, but also for like other works I want to expand in. So things like installation, it really helps me to like do a concrete plan. Like I think for me, it's a really useful preparatory tool. Um, and also like thinking about expanding it into different formats um it kind of helps me consolidate things into like smaller chunks of information so that i'm sort of thinking consciously regularly about like the viewer experience and how each sort of step is like impacting the final experience of the viewer in like a viewing context i look at drawing as like i said earlier a way of me getting into the zone of when i'm creating art I just, I'm quite a picky person, so to be able to draw for a bit before I jump into my painting or to draw in preparation for a painting, it's just a way to completely focus my mind and I just put a podcast on and I'm just like, I'm in the zone of my painting. Like it shuts everything else out. I use it more as, like we mentioned earlier, like a meditation type situation before the actual creating begins, so <laughs> I think it just uh, helps me to be more selective of my ideas because I eventually have an idea in my head and it might turn out very differently in, in the physical world that what I have planned. And it helps me to be more critical of my work and be more selective. Yeah, so uh, drawing with, as like a process uh, is really important to me in a lot of my third year practice because a lot of a lot of my work has been about developing characters and characters that have been inside my head and um, drawing them and embodying them well, making them like a kind of like a physical thing, even though it's, you know, like on 2D bit of paper, um, for example, it's, it's a way to flesh them out. Um, 
and yeah it's it's a good way to to play as well and not not be so rigid in like my thoughts it's you know you, you get into the flow of drawing and things and it helps you um get a bit more imagination i think um so i think keeping a record of your drawings or like a drawing routine is a really useful way of um figuring out what's important to you and what your perspective is um if you look at the things that recur in your drawings like for me personally over the last three years you pick out the things which are consistent and the things that eventually are gonna be most important in your work um so that's that's what i find most uh, useful about it um so during lockdown i've really learned the importance of routine and i find that creative space and creative routine enhance your creative process so Routine is really important in my work um, as it starts the process for me. Um, I feel no pressure and can just scribble on a page for hours, focusing on just one drawing. Um, but then it also eases my mind when I'm stressed and helps me simplify down my thought process, like meditation, but also as a brainstorm. Well, thank you everyone. My goodness, how to bring such a rich session to a close. I guess something that I'm struck by is the sheer heterogeneity of the kinds of drawings and processes and thinking that is at play in this community of practice because of course you're all very soon to be graduates joining us as peers and so it's been really special to have this conversation. And I think what's striking is that there's so many ways into drawing. And then of course, for you, now you're moving out of drawing or at least this drawing program, but no doubt you will continue to draw. So thank you all very much. Thank you to Adam Barrett, to Ashley Goldman, to Becky Hancock, to Christian Milborough, to Demi Styles, to Jen Wright, to Richard Blasco, to Sam Hopper, also to Rupert, it's been a really terrific conversation.